it's interesting if when you're up front here you see different things and sometimes others see some have had a yellow ball roll down the aisle Galatians chapter 4 just two verses and I want to talk to you about God's timing Galatians 4 verse 4 says but when the fullness of the time was come God sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. The fullness of time. You know, God understands about time. I believe God made time just for us. He, he doesn't need it, but he does things at the right time. And I know sometimes we don't believe that. We think he's too late or too early sometimes. God's timing is right. This was the right time for Jesus to be born. God had planned this. I don't know if you know it, but in Daniel chapter 9, God said when Jesus would be born, when he would be born, to the year. He said in 483 years after the, after the decree to rebuild Jerusalem, the Messiah would come. That's exactly what happened. You might know that when the, when the wise men asked the, you know, where is the Messiah? You know, they, they were clueless, you know. They thought everybody would be happy to know about this. And the king was pretty unhappy, you know. But uh, they knew exactly where he would be born. They said, oh, yeah, Micah 5.2 says the Messiah will be born in, in Bethlehem. Oh, okay, we're off to Bethlehem. But they hadn't seemed to have noticed so much when he would be born. God knew when and where Jesus would be born, and it was the right time. Th that expression, the fullness of time, means everything's been in place. This is what we've been planning on. It's like when you plan something and it actually works. <laughs> you know, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Everything works out and boom, it happens just at the right time. Well, that's exactly what happened with Jesus. He came at exactly the right time. You know, I just want to share a couple of things here further with this idea of time. God also had a right time for Jesus to die. Remember as you read the gospel, sometimes people would try to grab him and, and kill him. Sometimes the Bible says he just walked he just walked right through the crowd. There's nothing they could do. Because, and he would use the expression, my time is not yet. Romans 5, 6 says, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Due time. Just the right time. He wasn't so much murdered, although people took him and you know, did terrible things. But he gave his life. It was the right time. It was the right time. Well, there's also a right time for Jesus to come again. Now, we don't know when that is. He didn't tell us to the year. He told us the, the general time. He's promised us in John 14, I will come again. And in Ephesians 1.10, he says he'll do that in the fullness of time. Ooh, that sounds familiar. Uh, Ephesians 1.10 says that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in due time, in the fullness of time, Jesus will come again. And it made me think about us. We don't know when our fullness of time is. We don't know how long we have on this. We had a, a missionary friend who wrote us. Her father passed away this year. He was 103. 103. That was his fullness of time. That's, that's quite a bit of time by our, our thinking. But you know, it's just a, a speck of eternity, isn't it? I had a brother-in-law. He died when he was 51. His fullness of time. Great fella. We loved him. But, uh, he was on a, a church bike ride, and he, he told his wife, I'm, I'm going to head on out. I don't want to be the last one home. <laughs> that was his last words to his wife. Uh, and uh, he had a massive heart attack and died. Fullness of time. You know, death comes to us all. The Bible says, it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. We're all going to stand before God. And we don't know when that's going to be. Jesus came in the fullness of time. He'll come again. God has a time for, for him to come again. But the, the amount of time we have on this earth, uh, we really just don't know. James put it this way. You know not what shall be on the morrow. But what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. Now, compared to eternity, our lives are, are really quite brief. God gives us the opportunity to know. He gives us lots of opportunities. Isn't life interesting? You know, you just never know. Uh, who'd have thought we'd be doing what we're doing right now? Uh, you know, some of you know what I'm, what I'm talking about there. And, uh, 
God just has things in our life. And God is not surprised when things happen to you. God is able to work in it. You know, there's a lot of heartache. There's a lot of trouble. We live in a troubled world. But God knows. God has a good purpose for what, what we're going through. And someday we're going to stand before God. In the fullness of time, we need to know, we need to make sure that we have received the Savior who came. We put on the sign out front, call his name Jesus. He shall save his people from their sins. That's who he is. He's the Savior. And, uh, you know, I, I want to encourage you this morning. Uh, we, sh we should be so glad Jesus came. What a blessing. You know, that God would become a man and to live amongst us and die for us and rise from the dead and then in heaven work for us. He's our great high priest, you know. Uh, what a wonderful thing. We don't know the day of our death, but we can know the day of our salvation. Today we know the Lord. You know, sometimes I ask people, uh, have you ever trusted Christ as your Savior? No. When do you think you'll do it? Oh, someday. You know what the old saying, someday never comes? So for some people, well, I'll do it tomorrow. <laughs> well, tomorrow never comes. Uh, God tells us the day of our salvation. He says in 2 Corinthians 6, 2, Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Now is the time to trust Jesus Christ. The psalmist wrote in Psalm 95, Today, if you will hear his voice, he adds, Harden not your heart. Jesus is calling, tenderly calling, the song said. And it's true. That's why Jesus came. None of us deserve heaven. We're all sinners before God. But praise the Lord. God has a remedy for that. This is, this is not an incurable disease. It's the blood of Jesus Christ. Romans 6 says, The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Through Jesus Christ. That's why Jesus came. Now, we don't really know the exact day Jesus was born. Probably somebody says they do, but uh, we do know he came. Uh, we do know he's coming again. We do know we'll have to give an account. You notice as I read there in, in Galatians, he used some, uh, some words that apply to us today. Gal uh, where was that? Galatians chapter 4, verse 4. When the fullness of time was come. God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. That's his. Human birth is human experience to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. There's some real precious words there, redeem and adopt. Christ came to redeem us. He came to pay the price for our, for our sins. Let me ask you this morning, are you redeemed? Have you trusted Christ? Are you adopted? Are, are you his child? Many has received him, to them gave you power to become sons of God, the children of God. What a blessing that Jesus came. We're going to end with uh, number four there in your song book. Joy to the world. We're just going to sing the first two verses.